Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today we're going to tackle the plastic gunfighters from Dead Man's Hand. That's a box that comes from Great Escape Games. And you might have seen their metal miniatures before. This is the first plastic box that they've done. And I was pretty keen to get my hands on them. So finally having had a bit of a play around and a look at those, I thought, well, what better way to have a look at a quick review than to include some painting tips too. And I really had a lot of fun. <laughs> I swear I didn't just crack open Red Dead Redemption and stand in front of the mirror for a couple of hours. There was some real research involved too. But hopefully you'll find this one interesting. As always, all of the paints will be listed in the description below, as well as the base recipe for those of you who are curious. Let's get started. We'll start off by getting a quick look at the box itself. It advertises 10 multi-part miniatures, there are two sprues in the box, each containing five men, and they are identical to one another. But with the variety of stuff that's on the sprues, you're not going to make anybody that looks identical. They are... <laughs> there's a lot there. Now the box itself is nice. I always like a bit of artwork on boxes. As well, it's useful for color guidance. So we'll flip it around. And again, you've got some color suggestions on the back. Now here is one of the things that does stand out to me about this kit. And it does say that you can make lawmen, and it comes with badges that you can give them. Uh, the badges are one of the few things in the kit which just, they stand out a little bit to me. They are extremely large. You know, you see somebody walking around like that with a target that size on his chest, you've got, you've got a pretty good place to aim. But that's the one thing where I think you'd probably be better off painting a star or trimming that down a little if you're a bit more patient. As for the sprues themselves, you've got five separate sets of legs and five torsos. So you've got a decent chunk that you can spread around and change up poses and what have you. Uh, there is also a ton of arms. And one thing which I actually quite like, you'll see here these arms which have a little shotgun stock and then the barrels themselves are separate. I wasn't sure about that at first when I was assembling them, but I've come to really like it in part because it makes it much easier to trim down the shotgun barrel and make yourself a sawn off if that's what you want to equip your dudes with. There's a couple of rifles, a couple of you know, heavy pistols, and so many six shooters, you're not going to run out. <laughs> you can arm them all with uh, six shooters. There's empty holsters too, these little doublers down the side here. Now those spare holsters are quite handy for filling gaps. You'll see this long coat torso here. Now this has the same problem. If there's one thing that's like, oh, it's a bit of a shame really, not the badges, but this torso. Uh, the same thing with all multi-part kits which have long torsos. They tend to only work with one or two sets of legs. And that is true in this case. But the cool thing about that is these things being plastic, it doesn't take much to trim the, essentially trim their butts off. And once you've cut them down to look like Hank Hill, you don't have to worry too much about which legs fit the long torso body. It's not a hard conversion at all. But in honesty, I actually don't have a huge amount to say about the kit because it's really nice. Uh, there are some neat little accessories, a whole host of heads. You're not going to double up on many of these guys at all. Uh, two or three boxes of these if you really want to populate a Western table and you're not going to have any worries about whether or not they they start to blend together. This is, it's neat. I, I really like the set itself. So with that in mind, I assembled five dudes, and after a bit of thinking, I've picked one that I'm going to paint. So let's go ahead and get started on that. So after picking a bunch of parts and assembling this fella, I've decided to go ahead and hit him with a primer of Zandri Dust. Now this is a nice middle tone, sandy sort of color. You could just as easily start from something like Skeleton Bone or even a white, but I think Anything that we might miss with our paint, a sandy sort of brown is not going to look too bad in the recesses. We're probably not going to miss that. And to be honest, Xandri Dust might actually work really well for his trousers. I'm undecided, but we'll see how we get on. We'll start off first of all then by going with his skin, and I have here Tanned Flesh from the Army Painter. There isn't really a correct method for painting skin, it's whatever you think looks best. Uh, but Tanned Flesh will cover very well over Xandri Dust. I'm still probably going to need to come back and give him a second coat. And I'm not too worried in the process if I do hit his shirt, his hat, and what have you, which is why we're doing the skin first. After a couple of coats, we've got a nice solid skin tone, and it's time to start thinking about how we're going to paint up. I'm going to start with his shirt, because that is the lowest layer closest to his skin, 
and we can then tidy as we go by painting each layer over the top of that. One of the most useful tools you're going to have when thinking of color schemes for your gunfighters is going to be Western reenactors. When we think about reenactors in the term of World War II stuff, obviously getting precisely the correct uniform color can be a little challenging, both for us as painters and for folks who are sometimes recreating, like literally remaking, the equipment that they're showing off. When it comes to Western stuff though, we're talking about fashions, we're talking about production techniques. So these things have been kept alive for 150 years, and we've got a pretty good idea of what folks would have been wearing. And reenactors, generally speaking, have that right kit. So it's a pretty useful resource for us doing our painting. So for his shirt, I'm going to start off here with deck tan. Now this is a Vallejo color, and it's a really good just off white. You'll see it's very light, got a tiny hint of gray in it. I'm not too worried if I do end up splashing his vest, because of course we're going to paint that a different color. But let's get in here to his shirt. And yeah, we'll probably find a couple of coats of this will be necessary. Two coats later, we've got a nice just off white. And what we're going to do now is apply some pinstripes. Now this is going to be a bit of a trick here. I've watered down here. This is pastel blue from Vallejo. And I've got a nice thin brush. You don't automatically want to go to the smallest, tiniest brush you have, because that can sometimes make it a little more difficult. But something which keeps a point is going to be the most important thing here. Flow is what I want, not necessarily coverage. So what I'm going to do is angle this as much as I can with the camera in the way, so that instead of painting a straight line by moving my whole hand, I'm just going to wiggle my thumb and forefinger like that. And in doing that, let's start at the top here and just draw a, ooh, a line down and we'll follow the sleeve as best we can. This can be a little messy because we are going to have plenty of opportunity to tidy this up. Oh, goodness me. That's, yeah, I'm going to do this without the camera in the way. Now, unfortunately, I don't really have any advice on how to make this easier. This is one where patience and perseverance is going to come through. You'll see this stripe right on the front of this dude's sleeve is a little thicker than the others. You're probably going to need to come back and apply a second coat of the blue over some of these stripes, so you're likely to run a little bit thick. So ordinarily I would leave my cleanup until the final stage, but instead I've got some fresh deck tan, and I'm going to start tidying up these, uh, these stripes a little. Now when it comes to his vest, same as vests and waistcoats today, you would ordinarily have one color in the front and then a simpler color in the back. Uh, I'm not going to use a color. Instead I have here, this is uniform gray from the army painter. I'm going to paint the front of his vest with this and stop about halfway. Now there's nothing saying you couldn't paint the whole vest in one color. That wouldn't have been completely out of the question, but quite commonly front and back are different. Now you could use a lighter color, uh, sometimes even a very sort of silvery color, just an off-white. But instead I'm going to use black to fill in, well, the back. Back in black. Now our fella's starting to look fairly well put together. Let's go ahead and apply the paint to his trousers. I have here Steel Legion Drab. Um, any brown, any gray, any color really will do perfectly well here. Um, I like Steel Legion Drab because it's got just a little bit of warmth to it but it still works perfectly well for a woolen sort of appearance. Now trousers, as well as hats, are a really good spot to add a bit of color where you can differentiate between posses on the table. So if you're painting one group of these guys as lawmen and the other one as outlaws, well, painting your lawmen all with black hats or your outlaws all with the same brown trousers, it's relatively subtle, but it will work to differentiate them on the table. When it comes to leather, there are about 8,000 correct answers here. I'm going to paint in his boots, his gun belt, and the strap on his hat. This is fur brown from the Army Painter. It's a wonderful warm color. And when we shade it, it's going to look just brilliant. You could also use here Mornfang Brown, which is a similar, but it's not as red, but it's in that similar range. But yeah, this is going to look real nice. I also find it easiest to paint the hat band before painting the rest of the hat, because we can use that stage as the cleanup. Now just so that we can see it on the miniature, I do have here a little Mornfang brown, and I've changed my mind. I'm going to paint his gun belt in with this. 
Speaking of his hat, likewise, any sort of color is going to do the job here. Shades of beige were uh, pretty common. Brown, black, it's up to you. I'm using here Rakarth Flesh to lay down the base coats for this. Uh, you will find that this darkens down quite a bit as it dries. So if it goes on looking quite pale, don't worry. Give it a couple of minutes and you'll get a, a truer look at what it's going to look like. I mentioned earlier that the neckerchief would be a really good spot to add a bit of color. Uh, with this dude's color scheme so far, you know, there's a lot of reddish leather, some browns, maybe a dark green would also work really well here. But I'm going to turn to corn red and we'll pop this real quickly, making sure I don't hit his shirt in the process. Now that's nice and quick. We're going to go ahead and base coat his six shooter. For this, I'm going to use Iron Warriors, which is quite dark but we're going to come back later and highlight this and it will really shine. And then just a tiny wee bit of Retributor armor on the bullets on his gun belt. And then that is all of the base coats done. I've gone back and done a little bit of last minute tidy up. So I have solidified the color on the front of his vest, just tidied up his skin a little. I've given my Agrax Earthshade a really good shake and now we're going to apply this over the entire miniature. Now, particularly on areas like his sleeves, we'll get to that in a second, you don't want to apply too much because that is going to darken down those nice white sleeves quite a bit. So once you've applied it, splattered it on, just run your brush down the surface of the flatter areas to really guide it where you want it to go. Don't just splat it on and leave it or you're going to get dirty, dirty sleeves. But once you've applied this over the whole miniature, he's going to need about half an hour to dry. And then you're going to end up with something that looks like this. And I'm pretty pleased with that result. Obviously, there's a little bit more we're going to do. Uh, you could just base him up and put him on a table like this. I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong in how he's looking, but we can go a little further. So I'm going to start off by highlighting his skin, and I'm going to cover most of his skin again with some Cadian Flesh Tone. What I'm going to do is leave behind any recesses, like up really close to his sleeve here. I'll stop. Uh, up on his face, let's get a closer look there. What I'm going to do is paint in his nose, his cheekbones and similar, but leave those little creases around his face in this darker color. Now you'll find in some areas that you do want to come back and give that a second pass. Uh, Canadian Flesh Tone covers pretty well, but you will get a little bit of the color underneath showing through, which can be quite useful depending on what you're painting. I'm going to turn to Flat Flesh from Vallejo, and we're going to do some of our highlights with this. So up along his cheekbones is a good spot for this. Take your time, of course. And if you do make any mistakes, you can go back to Cadian Flesh Tone and tidy them up. Now that can take a little bit of practice. I like quite a sharp definition on my faces and such, because when I put them on the table, I still want to be able to see those details from a distance. When it comes to highlighting, there's really two ways of doing it from this point on. What you can do, if you don't want to own a huge number of paints, is just mix in a little bit of ivory or screaming skull into your base colors. Just a little bit at a time, really do be sparing with it, uh, and then you can highlight everything using essentially a universal highlight. I am instead going to turn to some lighter versions of the same colors. So I have Administratum Gray, and I am going to very carefully just paint some of the creases on this dude's waistcoat. A little bit of Wazdecker Red will help us to define some of the creases in his uh, neckerchief. Just a little bit of Baneblade Brown for the creases in his trousers. Now, personally, I don't ordinarily highlight the leather on the gun belt, but if you do, a little bit of scrag brown usually works quite well on Moonfang brown. Let's get him into shot there, and just a little bit of this. Now, I'm not quite sure what has possessed me to go this route, but I have a little Fenrisian gray, and yeah, I am going to highlight the stripes in his sleeve. I'm just trying to pick the right angle to start this from. I swear that looks way cooler in reality than it does on the camera here. When I get a photo at the end, I'm going to be able to color correct so you can see that a bit more clearly. But I realize that in having done the white, so the blue stripes rather, 
yeah, the white stripes are next up. So I have some off-white from Vallejo, and I'm going to repeat that, because I'm an idiot. Once it's painted, it's painted, and it will look cool forever. That is definitely a slow way of doing things, but it does look pretty cool, and I'm looking forward to getting some photos. What we'll move on to now is some Iron Hand Steel, and to be honest, any brighter silver color here will do the job. We'll go ahead, turn him sideways here, and we'll start highlighting his pistol. Then the last color I'm going to highlight is with a little bit of medium gray, his hat. Now you could use something like more Rakarth Flesh, or a little bit of a Flayed One Flesh, but this is going to look a little more natural, I think. And once this is done, what I'm going to do is take him outside, hit him with a matte varnish spray. As always, I'm going to use my Vallejo mat for that. And we'll go ahead and pop a base on him. Get a look at what this cowpoke looks like when he is all done. And there at last, our plastic dead man's hand gunfighter is complete. And I gotta say, like I do every time, I actually had a lot of fun painting him. There was a lot more mucking around with this dude than I would have expected, but the end result is pretty pretty cool. I'm quite happy with that. I think you could very easily change some of the colors. And for example, I haven't bothered highlighting the back of his waistcoat or his boots, but if you wanted to, you could spend that little bit of extra time. I think there's just plenty enough happening already that sometimes you've got to pick where to stop painting. Now the question will come up, what games can you play with these sorts of figures? And well, Dead Man's Hand being the obvious choice, but if you can find the PDFs, there's also Legends of the Out West Old West, rather. The Out West? Yeah. <laughs> Legends of the Old West from Warhammer Historical back in the day. You'll also find Ruthless from the fellas over at Little Wars TV. Uh, there is a free version of the rules that you can essentially get a feel for that one. And there is a really cool boxed set with scenery and miniatures and everything. That one's pretty cool, although I would probably play it in 28mm with figures like this. So all in all, I'd say that's a positive review. The miniatures themselves are really good. They come out really well after a bit of paint. And there's so many options in the box, I don't think you're going to have to worry about whether or not any of them are going to look similar. So as always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my producers, Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Trainboy, Fred, and Jimmy. Your support lets me go out and buy cowboys. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comments box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.